Can we put our hands together to the Lord and give him praise? <clears throat> Clap your hands, all your people, and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God, and we give him praise. So you can hear that I'm having some throat problems today, and so I pray that you would bear with me. I know that Brother Pestano had that challenge yesterday, and God touched him, so I am believing that the Lord will touch me as well. Amen. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. And I give honor to your leadership, to everyone who has made this possible, and I'm so very, very thankful to be in the house of the Lord with you. If you were in cluster one, I preach this message, and this is a message that I feel like God has <clears throat> given me that I am supposed to preach um, wherever I go and wherever I travel, and I pray that it will change your life. I know that God blessed and anointed Brother Pestano, your general superintendent, had this session and then was not able to be here, asked me to fill in, and he, he requested that I preach this message. And so I want to preach this message to you, and <clears throat> I'm reading from the book of Mark, chapter 5. <clears throat> then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadareans. <clears throat> and when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, no, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither <clears throat> could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshiped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and he said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. You understand today that when you get free, it torments hell. And hell does not want to be tormented. We're going to torment hell in this place today. Somebody's going to be set free, and hell's going to be tormented in this house. He said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. I want you to notice what this spirit said. He said, they begged the Lord, whatever you do, don't make us leave the country. If we have to leave the man, we want to stay inside his family. We want to stay inside the youth group. We want to stay inside the church. So if I can't have him, don't make us leave his neighborhood. Don't make us leave his environment. And I want to speak to you from this thought today, lingering spirits and soul ties. There are lingering spirits that don't want to leave this place. But I'm telling you right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, those lingering spirits are lying spirits, and they don't belong here. They're, let's evict them right now. Let's send them packing right now. Can you clap your hands to the Lord? Can you clap your hands to the Lord? Praise God. Let's clap our hands one more time and give God praise. I feel the Holy Ghost coming into this house. I feel the Holy Ghost coming into this house to cut some people free. I feel like the Lord's touching me right now. He's a miracle worker, and we know that he's on our side. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. I have asked the Lord some questions recently as a pastor of 28 years. 
because I have watched, I have watched people. I, I have watched young people and it's like they'll go to a conference, they'll pray through, they'll get the victory, and then they go back home, and all of a sudden their behaviors go back to what they were before. And it's like, how in the world are they acting out some things that their parents and even grandparents and maybe great-grandparents who have died and they're gone, but, but those lingering spirits of the family stay in the family. What hell does not want you to do today, young people, is get rid of generational curses. The devil does not want you tormenting hell because you made up your mind, I'm not going to allow the spirits that were on my mom and dad, my grandparents, to get a hold of my generation. And if you can do it for yourself, God will do it for this entire place today. Are you ready to cut some soul ties? Are you ready to watch God send some lingering spirits away from your family. So let me ask some questions that I've asked. Can dark demonic spirits linger in a person's life? If that's true and demonic spirits can linger in a person's life, then is a person contagious? And can the spirits transfer to family members and friends? We understand that we dealt with a pandemic, and even today we can look around at some people that are still wearing masks. And it's simply because there is a fear that says, I don't want to pick up, if someone here is contagious, I don't want to pick up the virus. I don't want to pick up what they have. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to have to go through that pandemic again, so I'm going to take extra precaution. If that's true in the physical world, is it also true in the spiritual world? Are there spirits that people are contagious? And if we get too close to them and you associate with them, do you pick up that demonic lingering spirit? Just as we would protect ourselves with a mask, we better protect ourselves with the anointing of God and make up our mind as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You've got to make up your mind. I'm not going to be a carrier of those lingering spirits. Uh, they may try to come to my house and knock on the door, but I'm not opening up the door. I will not let those spirits come into my house, and I will not pick up the virus. I will not be a carrier of these lingering spirits. Uh, you got to make up your mind right now. You say, well, I can't break the curse of my mom. I can't break the curse of my dad. I'm telling you, when you have the Holy Ghost, you can break any curse. When you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, you can break generations curses. We heard it this morning about our forefathers. Uh, God will visit the thousands of generations. When you make up your mind, you're going to cut some ties. Uh, you shake off those heavy chains uh, and God sets you free. Can the carriers of these spirits take on the identity of these spirits so closely that human beings are unaware of even knowing that they are a carrier and that they are camouflaging these lingering spirits. What is the biblical response from those who are spiritually healthy so that the spread of these lingering spirits don't continue to happen? These were the questions surrounding this man of Gadara. How did he even get in that situation? Gadara was an environment of lingering spirits. Gadara had lingering spirits from generations back, and they would attach themselves to new generations if that new generation did not defeat the old ancient lingering spirits. And if they did not defeat those old ancient lingering spirits, then human beings in a brand new generation that would come on the scene would then be like puppets on a string. And when those lingering spirits would pull a string, their hand would go up. And moms and dads and youth pastors and leaders say, why are they behaving that way? They don't even know why they're behaving that way. There's a lingering spirit that's pulling on them. You know you come to the house of God and God wants you to lift your hands in praise, but you don't feel like lifting your hands in praise. Those hands go down. Where's that spirit coming from? It's a lingering spirit that says, I'm not going to let you loose in this place. I'm not going to let you praise, but you've got to make up your mind. I'm not, I'm not a puppet on a string. I'm not going to bid their calling. I am going to to make sure that I'm breaking free from these lingering spirits. 
It's a lingering spirit. It's a lingering spirit that wants to write out a satanic script and then hand it over. The location of where the man lived ironically describes the inner life of the demon of Gadara. Gadara was a forest area with peaks and valleys along with dense woods and very confusing paths. If you went there, you would have a very difficult time finding your way through Gadara. And then if, if you walked a little bit further up and you looked into the mountainside, you would see these 20-foot enclosures and that's where the tombs were they weren't in the ground they were inside of a cave and the name Gadara means a place that is surrounded or a place that is walled not only do these lingering spirits want you to get into the cave but once you get into the cave they want to put a wall there so that you never make it out I just feel like marching around some walls today I just feel like letting hell know I'm not going into the cave and you're not going to wall me into addictions. You're not going to wall me into pornography. You're not going to wall me into generational curses. I wasn't made to live behind the walls of dysfunction. I was not created to live behind those walls. I wasn't made to live in Gadara. Can I preach to a young person right now? God didn't call you to backslide and go to Gadara. God didn't call you to backslide and quit the church and live behind walls. He called your generation to come out of the cave. He called your generation to tear down the walls. He called your generation to come out of the pain of yesterday so that he can heal you and take you into a powerful future. Can we clap our hands to the Lord and give him praise? Hallelujah. And so literally in, inside this there was a 20 foot enclosure and, and you could walk inside that enclosure and then there were these recesses that were, were, were kind of like drop offs similar to this and this is where they laid all of the dead bodies and this is where they laid all of those who never made it out of Gadara and so that man literally would have to walk and step over the dead bodies and thinking if they didn't make it out how am I going to make it out? And it was a constant reminder. You know there's some young people that should be here right now. You know there's some young people who are backslidden that are in the recesses of the cave and you had to step over them. They're going to be home when you get home and they're carrying lingering spirits. Uh, you've got to make up your mind there's a power that's going to come on you here that's going to walk into that recess of that cave and say you weren't meant to backslide and you reach in there and you pick them up and you let them know hell you're not going to have our youth group. Hell you're not going to take down who we are. Are there any young people in this house tonight that are ready to go back home and let hell know you're not getting our revival, you're not getting our anointing, and you're not getting our power? This was the prison of the man, and Satan wants it to be my prison and your prison. So I want to tell you, please never learn to tie your soul to lingering spirits. Lingering spirits and soul ties go hand in hand. The demons beg Jesus to allow them to linger in the neighborhood. If you make us come out of this man, let us stay in the environment. Let us stay in the church. Let us stay in the family. We don't want to be disembodied and we don't want to be homeless. It's clear that demon spirits will linger in any environment willing to entertain these spirits. They tempt in order to tie a soul to the experience. And so they, Satan will tempt you, and once you fall into that sin, there's a, an experience that comes along with that sin. With an experience, there's a memory. And with a memory, there is a trigger in your brain. And so if you ever allow, if you ever allow yourself And that lingering, see, you don't even know that it has you because it gives you a little bit of slack. 
It'll let you come to APYC and worship as long as when you get back home, you don't cut the tie. As long as when you get back home, you commit the sin again. As long as when you get back home. See, they don't mind you having a good weekend here. They just don't want you to change your life forever. And those lingering spirits want to tie you up with an experience that you said, that's how I'm always going to be. That's who I am, and I'll never break out of that. Can I tell you right now, you've got to untie yourself from those lingering spirits. Uh, they want to, they'll let you worship a little bit. They'll let you run the aisles. They'll let you talk in tongues, but then they'll pull you right back down. It's generational spirits, uh, but today in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, he's saying, what is your name? Uh, amen. He's going to rebuke that spirit from you. Uh, he will rebuke that spirit from your family. He will rebuke that spirit from your church, uh, and you will be the one to break the curse. Uh, you will be the generation that will end it. you got to make up your mind, today's the day. We are going to end what our country has been going through. We are going to end those lingering spirits that said we'll never get up and we'll never have the victory. Can I tell you the power of the Holy Ghost is going to set you free in this place right now. He'll set you free from addiction. He'll set you free from homosexuality. He'll set you free from lesbianism. He'll set you free from gender confusion. But you can't let him tie your soul to that experience. Here's what happens. Here's what happens. You try to get free. You try to get free and all of a sudden that lingering spirit just begins to pull you back. Some of you up there hadn't even been to the altar yet. And you say, I need to get to the altar before this, before this conference is over. And every time you try to come back, all of a sudden that lingering spirit says, no, you're not going to. And I'll just pull you right back to what you've always been. Because you have an experience. And in your experience, you have a memory. And that memory is trying to convince you, you'll never come out of the pain. You'll never come out of the trauma. You'll never get beyond the wound of your past. But you've got to make up your mind. Lingering spirit, you're not going to control me. Lingering spirit, I'm going to break free. L Come on, APYC. you got to break out of this place right now. You've got to cut yourself free. Can we clap our hands and give him praise right now? You weren't meant to be tied up. You weren't meant to be tied down. You weren't meant to live behind walls. Uh, you were meant to walk in your anointing and let God set you free in your call. Can we give him praise right now? Yes. What is it that you said, Seagate? Seagate? Come on. I learned something. So let me tell you how this works. Memory is for good or bad. You can have triggers in your memory of something bad, a painful experience, and anything that comes into your future that triggers that makes you remember the lingering spirits. And so you can, because of your memory and because of what's been stamped on your brain, it's called epinephrine. It's a chemical in the brain. Have you ever been ironing your clothes? and you left it on and you put it on and all of a sudden you, you, you left it on your shirt too long and you lifted it up and it's got the imprint of the iron on it. If you're a guy and you tried to iron, you probably did that. What's going on? Because it burned an image into the shirt, the same thing is true with the chemical in our brain, epinephrine. It literally stamps an impression on the brain so that even if we want to get it off, we can't because of the chemical that's in our brain. The only thing we can do is superimpose another picture on the image. That's why if you have ever dabbled in pornography, that image was imprinted by epinephrine in your brain. And that's why men and even some women will have cyclical problems because it's a lingering spirit and you'll come to APYC and you'll say, I'm going to break free. I'm going to break loose. But then all of a sudden you got the picture in there. All of a sudden the memory comes alive and the lingering spirit begins to pull you back and say, you'll never get beyond the picture. You'll never be a get beyond what's in your brain, but you got to make up your mind. That's okay. I may not be able to remove the picture, but I can put a brand new picture on top of that one and let the devil know. Ha! 
Calvary is in my brain right now. The blood is in my brain right now. The Holy Ghost is in my brain right now. And though I can't erase it, I can put a brand new picture on top of it. And the more you put that picture on top of it, the more you defeat those past experiences that you had. That's why you can't just sit up there and do nothing. That's why you can't sit right there and do nothing. You gotta put a new image on it. You gotta put a new experience on it. And when you experience the power of deliverance, come on, let God transform your mind in this house. Can we worship him? Worship him until he puts a new picture in your mind. Worship him until he literally changed your brain structure. So, so that's what they say. It's called firing and wiring of the brain. And there's something that fires. You have neurochemicals and you have neurons in your brain that carry bits and pieces of information. And when something fires the chemicals of your brain, it also wires itself to that experience. That's why if you're learning a second language and you learn that language and you say the word the first time, your brain fires and then your brain wires based on the experience. So when I lived in South Texas, I was trying to learn a little bit of Spanish and I learned the word comida. And based on the word comida, which means food, I would get food, I would taste the food, and I had a real good experience. So I re recognize, that was probably 40 years ago, I still know the word comida. Because when I get hungry, I want something to eat. I learned a word yesterday in, I think, Filipino. Sigue, sigue. I said, I asked, I asked Brother Harvey, I said, what does that mean? He said, I said, because it fired something up inside of me. I knew it meant something good. It meant, come on, come on. Guess what? I had an experience with that word. I'm going to go back home to Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm going to tell the church in Dallas, Fort Worth, sigue, sigue, sigue. I'm telling you something happens in the brain. Something happens in the heart. Something. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on all over this house. We need to worship the name of Jesus Christ. We need to get him in our heart. We need to get, so that you never forget the memory and you never forget the power of the Holy Ghost. All over this conference, shout Jesus. Come on louder. Let's worship him together in this house. Woo. Woo. That's a brand new experience. Devil, you're not going to get my brain. Devil, you're not going to get my mind. Devil, you're not going to get my marriage. Devil, you're not going to get my children. Devil, you're not going to get the church that I pastor. Devil, you're not going to get our youth group. Sigue. Jesus, Holy Ghost, power. Come on, you gotta have a brand new experience in this house that sets you free, that you'll never go back to the lingering spirits. Woo. Yes. And so there's a there's a there's an experience. There's a memory. How in the world did that man have himself chained, break out of it and chained back again and break out of it and chained back again? What was triggering him? What was going on biologically that was fighting against the supernatural? You understand that, don't you? 
Sometimes there can be even biological experiences that, that burn something inside of our brain that fights against the move of the Holy Ghost because somewhere the author of confusion and the father of lies teams up with that experience that you had and says that, ex that trauma, that wound that you went through, that hurt that you endured, you'll never be able to get out of that again. And even biologically, it connects with the spirit world. Uh, but you need to understand the devil didn't make your body. He didn't make your brain the creator of the world and you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made the devil doesn't have that much power over you he doesn't have that much power over your body he doesn't have that much power over your brain he doesn't have that much power over your thought process unless you let him have it and I'm telling you we're not going to let him have it in this house right now we're going to cut the tie we're going to break the chain and we're going to worship Jesus Christ I have some questions that I want to ask. One must curiously wonder, did the man of Gadara get confused about his identity as a man and tie his soul to the lie of transgenderism and gender fluidity where he becomes they and every time he knows it's wrong and he wants to break out of it. That spirit starts to pull him back and say, no, you're not apostolic. You're supposed to be homosexual. And you can't be apostolic and homosexual at the same time. And that lingering spirit begins to pull you back. you got to make up your mind who you are. you got to make up your mind in this place right now. The old lingering spirits uh, that tried to abuse me, the old lingering spirits that tried to haunt me are not going to control me today, and they will not control my future. Today, I'm cutting the soul tie. Today. Some of you tied your soul to some spirits and you didn't even know you did it until you came into this place today. And I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is going to cut you free. The Holy Ghost is going to set you free. Did violence and abuse repeatedly occur in his family, convincing him that he was damaged goods and he tied his soul to a false identity of being inferior to everyone else and feeling like he was never good enough and that he would always be damaged goods. Did he ever feel called into the ministry but his failures pushed him into isolation feeling that he could never get out and he tied his soul to the voice of his failures. Was there a secret painful memory that trapped him to the point of feeling hopeless and he tied himself to the dark pain of hopelessness? A soul tie. What is it, Brother McLaughlin? A soul tie starts when a convert with a conversation. And when you have a conversation with that spirit in the spirit realm, and you can be sitting here right now under my preaching and be talking to lingering spirits. You can literally have a spiritual conversation right now as I'm preaching and I hit on some things and that spirit jumps in front of my preaching and says, don't listen to that preacher right now. Tune that preacher out right now. Don't grasp what that preacher's saying right now. If that's happening to you, that's a lingering spirit and you don't need to let him tie something on to you in this house. You need to rebuke that spirit right now and let him know I'm not even giving you my ears. I'm not giving you my mind. I'm not giving you my heart. I I will not listen to your lies. Starts with a conversation. If you don't stop the conversation, it enters into an unholy covenant that feels unbreakable. A soul tie is formed when a teenager surrenders their virginity. It's that hot iron and it presses in to the spirit and there's a memory associated when you gave your purity and your virginity away 
and you gave something to that individual and you became emotionally attached to that individual and then they just used you and walked out in your life but there's something tied to your soul that says I've got to get them back I've got to get them back I've got to get them back you don't need to get them back you should have never had them in your life in the first place but what I am telling you is that you need a brand new relationship and that relationship is not with someone that's going to rob you of your purity but restore you of your purity you need to cut that soul ties uh, to that experience you had last year and come into this house and let the power of the Holy Ghost there's a reason the Bible said you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and what fire when the fire burns something inside of you it takes care of your past it takes care of all past experiences we need the Holy Ghost fire Come on, all over this conference floor. We need something so burned inside of us that it cuts us away from yesterday. It cuts us away from our past experiences. Am I preaching to anybody that wants to get out of a soul tie? Am I preaching to anybody that's ready to get out of Gadara? Am I preaching to anybody that's ready to shake off the chains? Am I preaching to anybody that wants to get beyond the pain of yesterday? Can we clap our hands to him and give him praise? Yes! A soul tie is made when men and women commit emotional and spiritual adultery that leads to physical adultery and they tie themselves to another person who's not even their spouse. You know that can happen. You know right now, sitting in this place, if you committed adultery, your soul can be tied to somebody that's 5,000 miles away from this place. And somebody 5,000 miles away from this place can have more control over you in this place than your own spouse does or your own children do. Can I preach to some adults right now and some that are moving into adulthood? Uh, don't you ever rob God and rob your marriage uh, for something cheap and something impure and something unholy. God has called you to walk the highway of holiness and you got to make up your mind. Uh, no relationship is going to control my walk with God. I will not tie my soul to that. A soul tie is made when something bad has happened to you and you make a promise that you will, you make a vow. You may even make a spiritual commitment to hell. I will never tell anyone that this happened to me. There are some of you in this place right now because the Holy Ghost is telling me right now that there are some of you that some very painful, traumatic, wounding things have happened to you. And you made a promise to not tell your parents. You made a promise to not tell your pastor. You've even tried to block God out. And you're not even let God dealing with some of those areas in your life. That's a soul tie right there. You've tied yourself to something that's going to make you bitter. You've tied yourself to something that's going to make you angry. Can I tell you right now that when Jesus went to the cross, uh, he didn't go to the cross so you remain bound. He went to the cross so that you could cut the tie and be free from that soul tie. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get rid of the lingering spirits and the soul ties that are trying to lock you up and never let you into your future. A soul tie. A soul tie takes on the identity of a wound, the identity of a hurt, and the identity of injustice, rather than taking on the identity of Jesus Christ. A soul tie is an open door that allows lingering spirits to come in your body and leave your body. Come into your body and leave your body. Come into your body and leave your body. A soul tie is a deeply embedded spiritual and emotional bond that becomes a brand new identity and you don't even want to be that person. It's a soul tie. Negative scripts are written and you need to know something about negative scripts when they're written. 
Not only do you have a soul tie, but those lingering spirits that are in your life will take a piece of paper and they'll write a script for you to act out because every negative script needs an actor. What good is it if the play writer has a script but nobody to come on stage and act out the script? And so hell writes a negative script for your life and says, now you become my puppet. You become my actor. And hell gives you a negative script. Let me tell you how that works. I grew up in a broken home where I watched my mom get drunk four to five times, three to four times a week. I watched my stepdad beat my mom up bloody her, blood all over the house, blood all over the floor. My mom would come into my life and she would give me a negative script and she would say to me, son, you're either going to end up dead or you're going to end up in the penitentiary. And so you know what I started saying, if that's what she thinks I'm going to be, then I'll go ahead and act out the script. You know what I did? I started doing drugs. I started partying. I got I got a DWI. I went to jail. In my mind, I thought, okay, if my mom really believes I'm going to go to prison, then, then I'll go to prison. I really don't care. If she thinks I'm going to die, then, then that's fine. I'll just do drugs and I'll die. And I started playing out the script until I went to the Pentecostal church. Until I walked in and the author and the finisher of my faith said, I've got a brand new script for you. I didn't call you to go to the penitentiary. I didn't call you to do drugs. I called you to preach the gospel and I need you to tear up the script. Some of you have been playing the role. you got to make up your mind. I'm tearing it up. I'm tearing it up. Devil, I'm not your actor anymore. I'm not going to play that anymore. I'm tearing it up. You got to make up your mind to tear up the negative script. You got to make up your mind that God has a better plan for you. Are there any young people that are ready to tear up a negative script? Are you in this house right now and you're ready? in front of your friends, in front of your family, to tear up that negative script and say, no more am I gonna be a slave to yesterday. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, come help me. Come help me. Somebody run up here real quick. Somebody that's ready to tear some things up. Just run up to this platform right now. And I want you to take this script as an example and say for my generation uh-huh hold on you see you see how you see that little fear right there who should do this that's what the spirit world wants nobody do it just stay in your seat but then somebody says i'm gonna tear it up i'm gonna tear it up i'm gonna come on i'm just that's it come on tear up the script you got to make up your mind today to tear up the script you got to pick it up and say devil i'm not going to live that way anymore devil i'm free i'm coming out of the pain i'm coming out of the cave i'm coming out of yesterday and i will be free come on young people tear up the script Can we worship him all over this house? Can we give him praise all over this house? You got the... Listen to me. I want you to listen to me. Those lingering spirits, they'll let you... Y'all go ahead and stay right here with me. You're going to help me preach. Those lingering spirits will let you tear up the script. Here's what you need to understand as the musicians come. The Bible said that Jesus is the author huh, and the finisher of my faith. The last chapter hasn't been written yet. And the author is going to tear up the script and is going to rewrite a brand new book. He's going to... He's going to rewrite a brand new page and a brand new chapter in somebody's life.
there's something in the field of education and in authoring a book that if another author likes your book but he wants to edit and revise and change something in the book, then he can contact the original author and he can, he can request to buy the story from you. And then if he pays enough money, he buys your book, which means he has buying rights. And once he has buying rights, he becomes the finisher of the book. He can rewrite it however he wants to rewrite it because he paid for the story. The author came to earth, paid for my story, paid for your story so that he could rewrite the book, so that he could rewrite the book and he's in this house right now and he's ready to tear up the negative script he's ready to rewrite the book he's going to put a brand new chapter in your life i said he's going to put a brand new chapter in your life so here's what's going to happen we're going to tear up the negative script through the blood of jesus christ He's going to write your story in blood. Remember those pictures in the brain? He takes his blood and he says, I forgive you. He's rewriting the chapter. Third thing we're going to do. I'm still tied up. But here's what the Bible said. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper, sharper, sharper than any two-edged sword. I said it's the Word. It's the preaching of the Word. It's the man of God that begins to preach that when I can't get loose, the man of God comes into my life. And he sets me free. He sets me free. He's here to cut the tie. He's here to cut your tie. He's giving you a brand new story. Be loosed. Be loosed. Be free. Would you put your hands together and let's let him work. Hold that. You got to tear it up. If I would have thought of this before, I would have had about a thousand pieces of paper. I would have handed paper out all over this place. It's the negative script. I tore mine up, but I'm waiting on some of you to tear yours up. Some of you are called to preach not to do drugs. Are you ready right now? I'm going to count to three. Everything that the original author, the devil, wrote in your life, it's more than one page, it's a whole book. But right now, in this service, we are going to tear up every page, every haunting memory, and we're about to replace it with the Holy Ghost fire. And we're going to rewire ourselves to a Holy Ghost experience that's going to set you free for a lifetime. Are you ready? Are you ready to be free? One, two, three. Tear it up. Tear it up. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus.
He's cutting it off. He's cutting it off. You're free. There is power. You're free. 